Now, um, I'm not very, okay, there's a better word for that. I am not exponentially, now that's a horrible way to use that word. Yeah, I, I don't know what you're exponentially at, but <laughs> I'm, I'm wondering where this is going. <laughs> Oh my goodness. Um, I am not well adversed in the theory of evolution. I just know that um, the belief is. I'm sorry. I was busy looking for where evolution came in at in this conversation. I have no idea why he's transitioned from atheism and religion to evolution. That makes no sense to me, but okay. Also, I feel like what he meant to say is that he's not well-versed, not adverse. Also, I'm not sure where the whole exponential thing came from, but he might have been trying to say expert. Again, I'm not an expert either. So... I don't expect anybody to be an expert, but you can just generally know about evolution. I'm a little scared to venture forward with his explanation of evolution, but let's listen to what he's got. Fish, what a uh, single cell organism turned into a fish. Then the fish decided one day it wanted to go on land and breathe air. And eventually that fish turned into an ape, which eventually turned into a man. Or a woman, and then here we are, supposedly millions, maybe billions of years later, living modern day lives. Oh, man. <sighs> I, I feel like me beating my head into a brick wall for five minutes straight would have been less painful than hearing that explanation of evolution. Nothing that he said makes any kind of sense except the fact that he's not an expert. I totally agree with that. You've definitely proven that. But I feel like He's probably getting this whole notion from apologists who talk about evolution, like Frank Turek. This sounds like a very Frank Turek type of explanation of evolution, because Frank doesn't understand evolution. He dumbs down evolution and then misrepresents it so that he can convince his audience that it's ridiculous. And if this young man has been listening to Frank Turek instead of real scientists and uh, or even just reading a biology textbook from, like, high school, he would understand that everything that he just said is wrong. But anyways, I digress. So the reason why this is wrong is because while we did start out as single-celled organisms, it's not that the single-celled organism became a fish, just like a fucking Pokemon, because that's what he described was Pokemon evolution. It's like the, the single-celled organism gained enough XP and then it transformed into a fish. There's so many steps in between there, because you've got single-cell, then you've got multicellular organisms, and then you've got just a plethora of different things that came way before fish evolved. All right, so that gets us up to the fish. So now that we're at the fish, he claims that the fish just decides to go on land. He's not considering that there are environmental pressures that made fish, amphibious fish rather, uh, decide to venture onto land in order to search out new for, uh, food resources or new environments to live in. And then after that, different environmental pressures uh, would have caused those organisms to change in a multitude of ways. And over billions of years, but not millions, billions of years, we finally get to the apes. And at that point, it's millions of years until we develop. So just trying to explain all the little holes in his idea here. But that is by far the absolute worst rendition of evolution that I've ever heard. Um, that's my understanding of what the main theory of evolution is. Now, if you think about it, it does sound far-fetched, but a lot of people believe in it. I, to me personally, a fish, I mean, I will agree on one thing. We do have gills in the womb before we're fully developed, but the re but I could argue the reason why is because there's ambiotic fluids, and obviously if we're surrounded by liquids, we can't breathe that because we don't have gills. So of course, um, our non-fully developed infant cells would need gills to survive in the womb. So I guess that's not really a counter argument, depending on how you look at it. It's just, I could kind of argue that we maybe God gave us gills in the womb because, you know, we're surrounded by antibiotic fluids. 
amniotic. Oh my god. So, it's amniotic, not ambiotic fluid, for one. Uh, for two, while the structures for gills kind of form, in humans, what they go on to form is like our, our chin and 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 jaw and stuff. Uh, that's that's what those go on to form into. But they're never fully functioning gills. Uh, the, but but the 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 whole structures, you know, forming first and whatnot on our necks uh, is a, a, a remnant of evolution because we do descend from ultimately. Uh, fish, but they're not fully functioning gills. We don't use gills to breathe in the womb. Okay, this is like some some bad women's anatomy type shit right here. Uh, because uh, while they're they're not fully formed and they develop into other you know parts of our bodies, those those wouldn't be the way that we we breathe. Um, we don't actually use our lungs in the womb. Because our lungs are, would be filled with fluid at that point. The way that we get oxygen and expel uh, carbon dioxide would be through the mother's placenta. That is what delivers the oxygen to the baby's heart, which is then uh, dispersed throughout the baby's body. Of course, that's much later in the pregnancy, calling it a baby. Uh, but, uh, you know, earlier it's the fetus, obviously. But still, we don't breathe amniotic fluid. So. I would argue that you can't use this argument for anything because it's just not reality. These are not facts. Do y'all recall earlier how he was telling us to go and Google the evidence for God? Maybe he needs to Google how gestation works. You feel free to talk about this. Like I said, I'm not well adversed in the topic of evolution. I just know like the basics. Like I don't have a college degree understanding of it or anything. And I don't really feel the need to understand it any more than I already do. <laughs> he doesn't think he needs to educate himself more on the topic of evolution because he has the basics down. No shit you're not an expert. <laughs> and no shit you don't have a college degree in this particular field. Holy fuck. I, I feel like at this point, when when somebody has obviously regurgitated something that is not reality, they have shown that they do not know or understand anything about the topics that they uh, are, are, are talking about. And they acknowledge that they're not an expert or they don't have like any kind of advanced knowledge of the topic that he's talking about, but then has the audacity to say, I don't feel like learning no more shit about these things. I, I feel like at that point, you're just kind of a lost cause because at that point you're saying, Hey, this is what I know. And I really don't give a shit if it's right or not, because that's all I'm ever going to know about. At that point, the conversation's over. There's no, there's really no point in even continuing to try with that person because they obviously don't don't want to learn correct information. They would rather stew in their ignorance. Because I personally don't believe in evolution. And it's not because of ignorance. Like I said in my last video. It is, <laughs> it is absolutely because of ignorance, my man. Yeah. Uh, it's definitely because of ignorance that he doesn't accept evolution. He's obviously not willing to learn what evolution is or what the science says about how organisms change over time. He's obviously not wanting to update his bad information on a topic. So the way that he's described evolution will always be evolution to him. And it's definitely ignorant. <laughs> That's being charitable. <laughs>